African drums are talking. On and on into the night boom the drums. Speaking of voodoo, witchcraft, mystery and menace. Their rhythmic beat breaks through walls of silence to bring you a story of Africa. Africa, that land where anything can happen. Listen. Professor Anton Edwards, while in Africa searching for a lost race, comes into possession of a mummified head that talks. Its language, according to the professor, is one that he, with another man, has been studying for many years, and which he attributes to the lost Atlanteans. This talking head has been directing their travels, but it led them into a dangerous situation with a tribe of cannibals dominated by an unknown white man. Through the efforts of Nguru, a huge Maasai prince, they escape and press on to climb a circular range of mountains. On reaching the top... They find themselves standing on the edge of what appears to be a gigantic extinct volcano. There is an earthquake, and the slab of rock on which they're standing starts to slide down into the crater with the professor, Lorna, Jack, and Nguru holding on for dear life. Buana. Buana. Wake, Buana. Devil, devil, home. Wake. Oh, what is it, Nguru? Leave me in peace. Buana. Buana, wake. Naona, Naona, no kill him. Oh, leave me in peace. I just shut up, shut up. Apana, Buana. Look him. Live for one time. Naona. What on earth are you talking about? Don't be so... So... Oh, good heavens. As I remember now, the crater, landslide. Aye, Buana. Nguru wake. Find devil home. By and by, devil come for one time all. Huh? Oh, don't be silly, Ungoro. Jack. Jack. You hurt, my boy? Oh. Oh, gee, I'm sleepy. Can I help? Jack, are you all right? Why? Well, yes, sir, of course. What? What's wrong? Well, don't you remember? The slide? We slid down into a volcano. Come snap out of it, son. Great Scott, yes. How long, how long have I been asleep? It must be night time. Where's Lona? Uh, don't wake her yet. I think she's all right. She's sleeping. I want to make some observations with you. Of course, sir. Isn't this a strange light? It's green. Buana. Him light for boss devil. Him look all time poly poly for watch him for lava. What's that he says, sir? He says it's the light from the eyes of the master devil as he watches us. Well, that's a theory at any rate. Oh, don't be foolish. You don't seem to realize what happened to us. We shot down many thousands of feet into an extinct volcano and we're still alive. I'm afraid my head's still heavy with sleep, yes, sir. Yes, I know. It's the atmosphere. We'll have to get used to it. Uh, is your watch going? Why? No, sir. It stopped. Yeah, so is mine. That means it's more than 24 hours since we wound it, or else the atmosphere caused it to stop, eh? Well, if this is really a volcanic crater, shouldn't it be full of gases? Yes, that's what's puzzling me. If it were, we'd be dead by now. Somehow the gases have been forced out. Look, the light's growing brighter, sir. Yes, it's spreading in an arc from way off. Good heavens, what phenomenon is this? Him, boss devil, come buona. Here, runga. Take him. Fight plenty good. Huh? What's he giving you your war club for? He thinks it's the approach of the father of all devils. He says he, he's going to have a good fight. <laughs> good old Nguro. I'd back him against a dozen devils. Say, this light is artificial, sir. Yes, or else the sun is streaming through some gaseous vapors high up. That's what it is. We must have come through them at a terrific rate on that slide down. That's what put us to sleep so heavily. Father, Jack... Oh, Lorna's awake, sir. Don't be afraid, dear. Everything's all right. Yes, I know. I've been listening to you two for the last five minutes. Father seems too interested in that light to take any notice Jack. of me. Jack, the light's growing by leaps and bounds. Watch it. Are you all right, Lorna? 
I'm stiff and sore from lying on that hard rock, but I think that's all. Oh, Jack, that horrible slide. I'll never forget it as long as I live. We seem to be going right down into the center of the earth. Well, we're all safe at any rate. I suppose we'll have to do some fine thinking to get out of this place. Jack, this is marvelous. The whole place is covered with a soft green light. When old Lamberty knows I've made these discoveries, he'll go mad with jealousy. So will all the others, for that matter. This is wonderful. The color must be caused by refraction of the sun's rays through layers of gases or thick vapors, eh? Where is Lamberty now, sir? Uh, I don't know. Haven't seen him since he threatened my life for exposing him. And Jack, he's never forgiven, Father. Uh, look, look. You can see now. We must have been shot across the ground for half a mile after we hit the bottom of the slope. It's a lucky thing for us, sir, that this slab of rock held together. Yes. Yes, but that's a minor consideration now. Have you noticed the ground? It's not volcanic. It's all good soil. Another phenomenon. Come on, I want to explore. Now look, what are those spots moving over there, sir? I've just been watching them. I think they're animals. Yes, yeah, see? There's a herd of them. Coming up over that rise. Father, do you remember when we first noticed the rock slipping away with us from the top? Yes, yes, I don't think I'm likely to forget it in a hurry. Why? Did you notice any other parts of the crater top start to slide? Well, I'm afraid I didn't pay much attention to anything except keeping flat on the rock. Well, maybe you'll think it's imagination. But after we'd started to move fast, I looked around and saw another flat piece of rock hurtling down. And I could have sworn there was somebody clinging to it. Well, that's rather uh, improbable, Lorna. We were only four people up there. Uh, what you saw was possibly some animal. One of those great lizards clinging on for its life. Hey, hey, take a look at that herd of beasts, Jack. What do you make of them? Well, they look like giraffes, sir. But their necks aren't long enough. Well, that's just what they are. You know, it's always been a theory of mine that if the giraffe was domesticated, its long neck would shrink in time. Jack, those are domestic animals. That means there are human beings here or near here. Oh, oh that awful thing. The head. It's talking to yes, me. Yes, I know. What does it say? Wana. Head spirit for love are good, huh? Yeah. It's assuring me that it's all right. And scolding me for not keeping to its directions. Travel north. Well, which is north? I'm afraid the compass has been damaged. Let me see it. Hmm. No. No, it hasn't been damaged, but there are magnetic rocks around here and throwing it off. Well, that's lost its usefulness for the time being. There's only one way to go, Father, and that's straight ahead. Yes, we'll have to try that. There's some more of those chickens over there, sir. Only they don't seem to be so large. Buana, bibi in guru kral speakum lived for spirit long time ago. She threw palaba, huh? What does he mean, Father? He said an old woman of his village once told him that he would visit with the souls of forgotten men, and she spoke truth. Now, why do you believe that, Nguru? Naona, Buana, look. Oh, there's a man running. It's a white man coming this way fast. There's another man following him. No, there are several huge fellows. Uh, well, those are apes. What? Great apes chasing the man in front. Get your rifle, Jack. All right. Cover the second animal. I'll take the first. If they get too close to him, shoot. Oh, he's seen us. He's all in, Father. He can't run much more. I'll take the nearest one. Hold your fire, though, Jack. All right, sir. Yeah, that spun him around. Yeah, Got to get him in the head, I guess. Yeah, that stopped him for good. What's the matter with the man? He stopped running. Get that nearest ape, Jack, in the head. Good. He's running again. It's the gunfire. He's not used to it. When he saw the beast go down, he was reassured. That's a peculiar dress he's wearing. He looks like a character out of a book. Buana, this no man, him spirit. Well, let's go to him. He's all in. Yes. The other apes have stopped to examine those we shot. Oh, Lord. Lord. Prithee, mercy. Mercy, oh, Lord. Mercy. He's fallen. Well, uh, just let him lie there and... Get his breath. Oh. Oh, sir, did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? Yes, he spoke English, Jack. Middle Ages English in keeping with his dress. Oh, poor fellow. Here. Here, drink this. Why, sir, you're trembling. Excitement, Jack. That's all excitement. Do you realize what we've done? Right in the heart of Africa, we found a race of people who speak English. Moth-eaten English, perhaps, but still we can understand them. Well, I'm just as excited as you are. But I'm wondering what sort of reception we'll get from the main body if there is one. Maybe they won't like outside interference. 
They may think we're enemies. He's better, Father. I think he wants to talk to you. Oh, great Lord, who kills with the voice of thunder, hold thine anger and visit not thy wrath upon this thy servant who kneeleth before thee. Uh, whence art thou, man? Knowest thou not, O oh Lord? Are we supposed to know where he's from? Evidently. He looks absolutely poor. Nay, I know not thy origin. Speak. Art thou not he, O oh Lord, the god of the rock? Be careful, sir. Your answer may mean life or death to us. He thinks we're God. I know, Jack. Leave it to me. Thou hast a, do a doubting heart, O oh man, and within the rock lieth a goodly reward for such as thee. Oh, nay, nay. I doubt not, O oh Lord. Thou art he. Thou art he. For only a God hath power to kill the sacred apes. For Pete's sake, those apes are sacred. Now we've done it. Then lead us unto thy master, that we may have speech with him. Behold, Lord, the priest of thy temple cometh. Look, look, Father. It's a knight in armor. There are several of them. Be careful. Leave this to me. It looks as if we've been thrust back into the Middle Ages. Buana, boss devil, come in iron. Those apes, sir, the man said they were sacred. If they are, we're going to have a tough time explaining the dead ones. Good Lord, Jack. Knights in armor were the last people I expected to meet down here. Keep your gun ready. You too, Lorna. You expect trouble? I don't know. These people seem to be part of a forgotten race. They speak medieval English and wear clothes that date back a thousand years. There must be a city near here. Keep your heads and we'll be all right. Here they come. 